So we ended last class talking about the eigenvalue problem, and we worked a simple example in a two-by-two matrix, right? We solved for the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. And then I was sort of in the middle of uh, showing you something as an aside, and this is where we stopped. And that is, just like in one dimension, uh, the ordinary differential equation, and I think I made a claim a little bit too broadly last time that any ordinary differential equation can be solved this way. Uh, I should have caveated that to say any ordinary differential equation with initial conditions. Uh, so uh, actually what we would call an initial value problem can be solved this way. Um, so just like in one dimension we have uh, the solution to ordinary differential equation as e to the at, then we can construct uh, a system, you know, if you have a in, in multiple dimensions, so you have multiple unknowns here, V and W, so you have a system of ordinary differential equations. And I wrote this system down in such a way that if we wrote it in matrix form, it turned out it had the exact same A matrix that we had already solved for, right? In terms of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And I told you that the solution to any system of ordinary differential equations, again, I should have caveated with initial conditions, is e to the at, where a is the coefficient matrix. Okay? So then the only trick is how to take e to the at, because it's not as simple as just raising, you know, it would be great if it was just as simple as raising, you know, every uh, matrix entry to the, you know, e to that power, but it's not that simple. So what we can do is we can use an eigenvalue decomposition, right, or an eigen decomposition of A, where we have a matrix of the eigenvectors in column form times a diagonal matrix where the eigenvalues are the, on the diagonal times, again, <coughs> the same matrix of the eigenvectors uh, inversed. Okay, and we called that matrix of the eigenvectors Q. So when you write it in that form, uh, also introducing lambda is equal to this diagonal matrix, then we say that A is equal to Q lambda Q inverse, and this is the eigen decomposition of A. Okay. And now, we can actually solve for E to the AT easier because E, e to the lambda T, right, because lambda is special, it's a diagonal matrix e to the lambda t is, in fact, just the, the diagonal entries raised you know, e to the diagonal entry power. Right? So I'll show you that. I'll show you that in just a second. So we can very easily solve this system of dif differential equation using what we know about eigenvalues. So uh, I had jumped over to Mathematica. Remember, I so this is right, the last thing I did in class. So I said, I said, I defined a matrix lambda, which is the eigenvalues. That those are the ones that we solved for in class, right? Minus 1 and 2. I defined a matrix Q, where the column vectors are the, eigenva are the eigenvectors, right? We had one eigenvector associated with minus 1. That was 1, 1. We had another eigenvector associated with uh, lambda equal to 2. That was 5, 2. Right? And so then I just show you that this does, in fact, this decomposition, Q times lambda times the inverse of Q, does give you A back, okay? So the next thing to do, of course, Mathematica is smart enough that it can actually just take a, a matrix, an exponent of a matrix. So if I just say matrix, well, let's just wait. I'll, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prove to you that um, the, the exponential matrix of a diagonal matrix is simply the diagonal entries to the e power. Right? So, if, you know, lambda is a diagonal matrix. So if I take its matrix exponent, if we look at it in matrix form, right, it is just Right, so it's e to the minus one power, which is the same as one over my, one over e, right? And it's e to the 
two power, right? So then it's it's this way. But I, I guess I should say in in our in our case it's it's that. We're trying to multiply we have to multiply by two. So a diagonal matrix, you can take its matrix exponent just like that. Right? So then all we have to do is say Q inverse Q. Right? So then that that's E to the AT. Okay. That's E to the AT. And of course, in Mathematica, we can verify that because Mathematica is smart enough that we can just take the matrix exponent of AT. Right. So E to the AT is that. Those two guys are the same, right? But everybody understand why this was much simpler. Because we could do this by hand. I mean, I just did it in the computer because I wanted to verify it against that. But we could do this by hand because we know we already solved for lambda. <coughs> All right. So then, uh, you know, I said the solution to the differential equation is e to the a t, which now we have times the vector of the initial conditions, which is 8 and 5. So if I just go back here, and multiply all that by the vector 8, 5, um, you can simplify it. So that is the solution of that system of differential equations. It's u of t equals this, v of t equals that. Or I'm sorry, v of t equals this, w of t equals that. So as just one final verification, and then also, again, to sort of hope to, and you know, my goal in any course is to, when you leave, if the only thing you take from the course is a better knowledge of how to use the computer to help you solve problems, I don't, I don't even care if there are problems associated with this class. Right? That's a goal for me. So uh, just as another example to show you how to use these tools to help you solve problems, I'm going to show you how many, how many of you knew, have you, have you ever used Mathematic at all? Wait, one person? Uh, how many of you used uh, Wolfram Alpha on, on, on mine? So, so uh, Wolfram Alpha started in 2009 or something, 8. Mathematics started in 1984. Mathematica is the engine that drives Wolfram Alpha. So when you call an in, you know, you probably use it to check your homework or something, your calculus homework. You use Wolfram Alpha to do an integral. It's, it's Mathematica that's actually solving it. It's the compute engine behind it. And Mathematica can actually solve differential equations in closed form, even systems of differential equations in closed form. Right? So let's let's do, let's just verify, right? So using Mathematica as differential equation solver. So it's it's called dsolve, and then I have to put in the equations. So in this case, I had uh, v prime of t is equal to, so this is, I'm trying to write this equation, v prime of t, right, so the first derivative of v with respect to t is equal to 4v minus 5w. W prime of t, so the first derivative of W with respect to t, is equal to 2v minus 3w. And 
And then I had to put in the, the initial conditions. So the initial conditions were uh, that V at 0 equals 8 and W at 0 equals 5. And then I have to tell it what I want to solve for. I want to solve for V of T and W of T. And then the independent variable is T. Mathematica solution, my solution, Mathematica solution, my solution. My solution being your solution, e to the at. We could have just wrote it down. It's simple enough, we could have done it by hand. In fact, we did solve the eigenvalues and eigenvectors by hand, right? All, all we had to do, you know, the next step was just matri matrix multiplication, right? Which we know how to do. So now you know how to solve every single initial value problem, ordinary differential equation, initial value problem that you could ever encounter. Who wish you would have known this function when you were taking differential equation? Real nice way to check your homework, right? The software existed. The math teachers must have just wanted to keep you in the dark. I don't want to keep you in the dark. Your engineers, your problem solvers, use the tools available to you. Uh, before I get